Okay, let us start. Um, yeah, sorry about the delay. We, um, I also needed time a little bit to gather some data, some latest news as well. Um, but we've got uh, a lot to catch up, actually. Um, a lot of um, uh, <clears throat> sort of updates just on, um, <clears throat> on existing trades as well, especially. And then we want to look at uh, how it has actually been in the past 24 hours. So, um, welcome to today's uh, Breton's Friday uh, Market Wrap-Up. My name is Kenny Simon. Um, to the ones that are on a regular basis attending my webinars, uh, welcome back and thank you uh, for attending. And uh, we shall get going. Sorry about this. Uh, <laughs> I've forgotten about what I'm showing on my screen. Okay, so um, we have had the ADP. Uh, I think the latest uh, impactful event is actually ADP that would actually be correlated. ADP was on Wednesday, the automated version of the um, uh, of employment data. And that usually sort of correlates with uh, today's NFP. So today is the 6th of August. And basically, we have got quite a number of um, high impact news. So uh, we are looking into how speeches and reports uh, from Australia would actually be impacting uh, Australia's economy. So we'll talk about uh, economy, per economy as well, just roughly to give you a bit of an idea of what could actually impact, how could it actually impact uh, the uh, next week's uh, sort of movement as well as from now, uh, Australia, Japan, US, uh, UK, Europe, you know, a couple of things. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about gold as well. And then we'll get into the technicals. Uh, so in Australia, Australia, of course, it has, uh, we'll talk about Australia in a bit, but now we'll go into the US first. I mean, because uh, this is also impacting uh, gold, of course, but then not anymore um, with a direct correlate, uh, negative correlation. So it is actually uh, the correlation has decoupled, meaning that the correlation has gone into its own way now uh, between gold between gold and also the US's uh, economy, US um, dollar, and various other things in the US. So uh, with that, we are seeing the NFP uh, today, but on Wednesday, uh, I think the figure was actually quite bad. Uh, so it didn't really, it was not giving um, positive um, sentiments on Wednesday when the ADP came out. So in the US, uh, the treasury yield as of uh, yesterday, today is still on a flat uh, at the moment. And basically, even after better than expected data, I think it was the service, uh, service sector data uh, that as well didn't really push up anything. So it was more on the slow side, flat side on, on all grounds. So we want to take a look at it technically as well today on US uh, majors especially. Uh, so it was a <clears throat> very disappointing ADP. So this disappointing ADP, we want to look at levels as well technically today, whether or not it would actually impact uh, today's NFP. Okay. Sometimes <clears throat> it's also good to look at hints through a technical perspective and then to mirror that with what could actually happen uh, in the fundamentals, data, and news. And we want to also do that vice versa to actually look at what the impact is. But we need to marry the technical and fundamental quite uh, closely. So we will do that uh, with, the, um, with the current movements of prices, especially on a technical, in the technical chart across various uh, time frames, and we'll look into all these levels as well. Okay, so that is actually more or less in the US. Uh, we want to also take a look uh, with regards to heat maps as well, what has actually been going on. Uh, with regards to the top movers as of today for the past uh, 24 hours or so, um, we see a lot of uh, concentration focus on Australia crosses. You can see, I think, um, the top five itself has got Australian dollar on it, and then uh, Australia versus uh, USD, CAD, and Euro as well. Uh, so if you want to match that up with what's going on today, let's see. Um, on the data uh, side of it, we do have, of course, impact on Australia because of the speech and the monetary policy statement, uh, but also US definitely because of the NFP. And we want to also take a look 
uh, later on with the heat map as well on CAD uh, crosses because we've got unemployment uh, figures today and data. So these are the high impact ones. And usually if we've got Australia in there, we've also got New Zealand uh, in the mix as well, moving accordingly. And we've got US, so we want to look at gold as well to some respect, um, USD crosses as well. So here we can see that the preference of a commodity currency uh, or like Australian dollar is preferred um, on the sell side mainly because of the lockdown. So in Australia, we still have fresh COVID-19 Delta variant related lockdown. So it's going worse. It's getting worse and worse. Uh, so that is basically has, um, I think it's got a, a strong uh, sort of um, uh, pattern uh, in terms of the downtrend that we are expecting. So I know that uh, quite a number of us are actually having floating of uh, AUD JPY, uh, all the AUD, most of the AUD crosses as well. And we want to take a look at that technically, but on the fundamental side of it, it is still going to be very weak and maybe getting weaker uh, for Australia because they have also delayed tapering. Tapering is just printing of money. So that basically means that uh, there, there may not be any boost or any wild uh, type correction. They may all always be correction, but there is no uh, wild correction to actually correct the market totally to the upside. It's going to be very far from that. Uh, so the inflation has also been lower than expected. So there are too many uh, jabs in the um, Australian, uh, Australian economy. And uh, that is actually good to know so that we know that it's not going to experience a total change of trend or anything that the government is doing at the moment is not really going to be very impactful to change the trend from a strongly downtrend to a you know uh, a push to the upside so this is good for us to look at even on the table itself you can actually see it's mostly selling um, of the Australian dollar uh, the one that has uh, a bit of a clear clarity according to this table um, for Australian crosses is uh, euro AUD so I want to also look at euro AUD later on maybe we've got some um, correlated pairs with it also whether or not there's some trading opportunity so both uh, as you can see there are four dots here right four hour right up to the monthly so you've got euro AUD as well as AUD JPY so we are more mostly on the JP, AUD JPY trade, still on floating, if, if I have guessed that right. Um, but we can take a look at that and see what to expect in the shortest term. Today is Friday as well. So whether or not uh, we want to leave that open for any gaps in the market expected on Monday. So we want to plan, plan that forward on anything that we have uh, sort of floating at the moment. And whether or not to close the trade, maintain it, uh, and, and close it early or various other things that we can actually do. But we want to take a look at a trend first. Now we're doing a bit of a market analysis. In general, before we do technical analysis, before we do trend analysis, various other things, right? So at this stage, we have got this um, five uh, top, the top five itself, as I've mentioned, includes Australian dollar. Um, we can see that we have got a lot of um, still mixture interest of trading in commodity currencies. What are commodity currencies? Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, uh, Canadian dollar, even the South African uh, czar as well, uh, South African RAND, the czar, Z-A-R, yeah? So we've got that as well. We didn't have much of a JPY. If you can see, it's not a safe haven type trading. There is no panic too much in the market yet. Uh, so there is no rush in uh, safe havens like Japanese yen, CHF. You can see that CHF as well is quite low in the interest by uh, lots of traders. So we want to take a look at the heat map as well to look at the trend. So here we can actually see commodity currencies is mainly the one to pay attention to. And then on Sunday session on commodities, I will give you a, a, a bit more detailed analysis 
analysis on oil, okay, both uh, WTI as well as um, uh, crude, uh, sorry, the crude WTI as well as Brent, uh, because I think uh, the oil type um, rush in trading has actually winded down a little bit. So they have brought the prices down and maybe they're aiming for getting back into some support level. So uh, we want to look at events that can actually um, motivate and bring interest to oil traders, but I don't think it's going to be today uh, at all. This week itself, the um, the interest in trading oil has sort of died down and gone down a little bit, but we want to make sure whether or not there are some events or catalysts in the market to actually attract all these traders back again into buying of oil next week or maybe further selling. We don't know that yet. So at this moment of time, this week, I could see a decline in the interest in trading oil by the big boys as well. And uh, I think that could actually mean two things. Maybe not the timing, there's no events, or they're actually just uh, mellowing down so that they can actually uh, buy in a better price. But also it's they need equil equilibrium at the moment to balance that. So the reason why I see that as an impact as well is because we could see that that is impacting commodities as a whole. So we want to also look at the precious metal market, whether we have any um, sort of opportunities from next week onwards. Uh, in a lot of part of Europe at the moment, it's very it's quietening down, especially Mediterranean side, Greece, Cyprus, Italy, uh, Spain as well. It's all holiday months at the moment. So it is actually very, very low. Uh, people are going on vacations this time, especially in the whole month of August as well. Okay, so this is what's going on in this side of the world. Um, let's see. With regards to Japan as well, there is a slight recovery, but... Um, uh, what they are talking about in Japan at the moment with regards to economic recovery and everything, they are not expecting any boost in the economy and everything else until September onwards. So it is going to be on limbo at the moment, the Japanese yen, but it does actually depend on the situation of COVID as well and safe haven type interest uh, on the Japanese yen for now until September. Okay, so we will evaluate that as well together. And uh, this is <coughs> on the heat map side of it. Now we go to the heat map side of it and let's see what's going on there. Okay, so as we can see, Japan basically slowed down. Australia, we've mentioned, as uh, de they delayed tapering and it's getting worse with the fresh uh, COVID lockdown. Um, US, uh, basically, ADP jobs, very disappointing. Treasury yield is very flat. Um, in the UK, we have got, yes, they have talked about a lot of recovery and then going down again, but they have found out that I think as of last week, um, they still have got not much confidence in the people in the UK to actually travel. 40% of the market in the UK still don't want to travel because of the COVID situation. So they are not really very confident. And that confidence of people is also keeping them from spending money. So the buying behavior is also uh, getting a little bit on the fearful side of it and being very careful. So that basically is impacting or may actually impact the economy much more, basically bringing down the, the UK pound, uh, perhaps because it's not flowing with um, actions by the people buying, spending. And this is how the country makes money as well and then the economy improves but um, there is a, a very big delay uh, in in recovered uh, feeling of the buyers and the buying behavior in the UK so this is what they're dealing with at the moment so we want to look at whether or not the charts of GBP crosses can actually impact all it uh, can actually reflect all this uh, impact of buying behavior. So we want to look at that as well today. GBP crosses as well, quite important. Um, in terms of Europe as a whole, it is actually going to be improving. There are lots of signs uh, of uh, how they have um, said that their um, 
inflation target has been hit and also their pandemic uh what do you call that uh, risk factor of uh, controlling the entire 11 plus countries in the eurozone with regards to covid is actually been improving quite well so businesses are rebounding as well so this could actually be quite interesting to look at euro gbp as well and then to look at whether or not the uk side of it is getting to the low side and then the europe side is getting to the upside then we can look at euro crosses as well and the uh, euro gbp will actually be quite interesting for the next uh, couple of weeks couple of months <clears throat> if we can see that both of these countries are having a little bit of a uh, what do you call that um inverse relationship in terms of the economy so i'm expecting as well that the euro economy is getting better and better and better more positivity but then uh, not really sure more fearful factor in the uk side of it uh, now we have also mentioned about how the gbp is correlated with gold and i can actually see that the gold's reflection as well is a reflection of how the uk economy is actually moving um, not so much with the with the us the us is impacting it uh, uh, for volatility reasons but then not really correlated too much now like it it used to be negative correlation and stuff like that so uh, but still it it requires uh, um, you know volatility from the us when the us has got reasons to move its own economy the, the the us dollar and all that obviously it will actually move the gold but then in terms of correlation it is closer goals movements of price with the uk what's happening in the uk this is quite interesting right uh, so in europe as well if you look at the gold um, physical gold holding um, uk has the highest as well in the whole of the european zone of course you got germany second but then um, in the entire world second gold holder is uh, is the eurozone uh, because if you collectively collect all the 11 countries yes you will have lots of gold but uk still has a very large holding um, of uh, formal and governmental uh, gold holding physical gold as well so this is maybe one of the reasons but it's not been uh, put out there to people to actually tell them that uh, okay the uk economy and the uk's gold gold uh, holding is is basically correlated directly to the price of gold today we cannot say that because there's just no not much evidence in that okay let's look at heat maps now now heat maps if we go <coughs> individually individually um there's still a lot of mixture here we are not looking at columns that are dark red or dark blue as yet so maybe it is still a little bit early um, with the uk's uh, opening session london session so as you can see it's quite mixed up here so what i usually do as well sometimes is also to go on the action bias side of it and to look at whether or not we may have a little bit clearer picture of uh, some of the pairs um, not so much as well but we can see um, the downside AUD and ZD right here is still in the downside but the um, that's probably the only pair that is showing downside here um, from the six hour chart I think onwards until the weekly chart only the uh, one hour is not uh, it's neutral but it's giving you that so we can still take a look at AUD and ZD as well mainly because um, there's just too much focus on the on <coughs> on a Australian dollar pair but I've already written down the Euro AUD AUD JPY to look at as well as AUD and ZD at this moment of time so just a very quick um, look at the volatility chart as well because we just want to explore because we've got us today of course um so we want to take a look at the usd four hour plus the daily what would the volatility look like so you can see that the us usd is expected on the daily chart especially to be quite volatile with the gbp okay so of course we need not forget that uh, there are some favorite pairs to trade as well especially on nfp right so usd jpy is quite uh, quite um, something but then it's not showing the volatility here so much but it's showing volatility on gbp and chf so we want to be aware of this as well 
um, mainly because uh, we never know. Maybe there are some events today that might move the GBP USD more. Uh, we don't really have a high impact data on uh, on GBP, but um, this might actually be correlated to gold. You see, so this is where we want to also look at crosses, um, US crosses or major pairs like GBP USD as well. So this is good to write uh, and to know that today you've got NFP, but you want to know the USD's movement. How uh, volatile would it move against which currency? So I will write it down: GBP, CHF, uh, AUD, of course, as well as CAD. Okay. So this is it, and then uh, we want to also look at Canadian dollar because Canadian dollar let's see Canadian dollar versus JPY right here you can see it's versus JPY uh, we want to also take a look let's see that right so we have got uh, yeah Australian dollar as well we can take a look Okay, Australian dollar, interesting enough, uh, we want to look at Australian dollar with the CHF, okay, that's the one that um, is quite clear, but of course with JPY as well, with JPY and also um, to some extent, we've got JPY, GBP as well, but J mostly, I think more JPY and CHF. These are the two that we want to take a look at because um, our floating uh, trades or trade ideas has been shared uh, did actually um, visit the loads of AUD crosses, right? So AUD JPY, AUD CHF as well, um, Euro AUD to some extent as well. So yes, we want to look at that. So okay, now we've done that side of it. Um, just very... <coughs> very um, roughly we can actually see natural gas outlook they're talking about gas as well here at the moment um, but then us uh, dollar outlook it, it says here already it's bearish against most of the uh, asian pair okay so will that actually be a continuation or continuing uh, the trend for the downside of the uh, dollar we want to take a look at that on the charts and then you can see that um, it has also announced nasdaq uh, 100 hits nasdaq 100 sorry um, nasdaq hitting all-time high and basically it has lifted the nikkei as well as the australian uh, stocks uh, 200 asx okay uh, australian dollar may move on rba all this one here basically um, it looks like it's going to be quite volatile on the Australian side of it, mainly because of what it is going through right now is quite crazy. Very, very big, impactful things Australia is going through. Um, it will impact China as a whole. China will impact the entire world as a whole, especially on the manufacturing side of it, because now they seem to have a block in terms of the um, goods going from Australia, minerals and all that. Uh, not a block, but a slowdown in that order. So a slowdown in the order uh, because of um, situation in Australia. So that cargoes and all that going out is slowing down and that will actually impact the slowdown of economy in China, meaning the production and the um, production of finished goods and all that using minerals in Australia. So that will then impact um, uh, Asia as a whole as well. So the Asian uh, currencies may actually be uh, sort of impacted, but not really directly because they are quite self-sustained as well. Certain countries like uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, um, even in uh, uh, Vietnam as well, they have their own way of sustaining their own production. For, uh, they might make even more money as well when, when uh, China is weak uh, at the moment for exporting their goods. Uh, so they might actually be replacing that demand uh, need as well. So that is a bit of a limbo kind of thing. But what we are concerned of is how the Asian currency will actually be impacted impacted by uh, what's going on in the US and all that, because that is a correlation as well, okay? Because the US um, 
whatever is happening in the US side of it, as well as Euro, but especially US, has some positive correlation with what goes on with Asian currencies. So when the US goes down, you know, you, you will definitely see a bit of a push in uh, the um, Asian currencies, but not really the economy as a whole, you know, because there is a lot of correlation between Asian economy and US economy. So, okay, we'll talk about that a lot more later on, but now let's get to the charts. Okay, so um, we have, I'm showing you guys Euro CHF at this moment. I am still floating the Euro CHF. Um, uh, my week has been not too bad at all. I've, uh, I've um, uh, recovered a lot of losses with uh, lots of uh, uh, floating trade ideas and trade signals that I have shared with you guys. I've taken most of what I have shared. I've taken the trades on most of what I've shared. So um, CAD JPY is still hanging there at the moment, uh, but then it keeps on going back and forth uh, towards the C point right there, but I'm still expecting it to fall. Uh, what was actually a good trade was uh, the GBP-JPY. So the GBP-JPY is still giving us a lot of hints to the downside, of course, mainly because we are seeing a lot of block uh, very strong resistance at the very top. Okay, so it has built this lower low right now as well, right here. And uh, what I can see as well is a potential of it um, having like a triple top to go down. At the moment, you've got a double top right here. Um, so where I have actually uh, traded and made last week about it just with one trade that I was waiting for about a week plus, I think almost two weeks, um, made about a 1,500 on a single trade trading two lots, mainly because of this area right here between 15240 I have sold and I have taken profit at 15190. So that trade is mainly motivated by price action that I can show you right here. Um, and you can see that, um, so I want to show you the correlation uh, between being really good in identifying um, buying zones and selling zones and also looking at all these powerful candles right here. So this is an example that we will do price action type analysis based on powerful mother candles to the left in different time frames is a very, very powerful technique uh, that can actually help you understand whether or not uh, you are at the right direction of the market because sometimes we may actually enter the trade quite early. So with the GBP JPY, we were entering it, you know, really early, but then somehow it just returned to the uh, downtrend again, mainly because as you can see, you've got all these powerful candles on standby, okay? And these are all the, the zones uh, that are uh, showing you that this is where the sellers have actually accumulated and they have accumulated quite strongly and you have got all these candles to prove to you that in within that range it is uh, going to be selling and selling and selling all the time in in this range but now of course it has corrected already but as it corrects upwards this is gbp jpy that we're talking um, about in the four hour chart uh, we see still a threat right there between 153.14 to 153.41. This uh, area right here, with the two yellow lines are very, very strong, powerful resistance level. So I still see that <clears throat> uh, the potential of it uh, to actually pierce through these two areas are still very, very low. Uh, also because we are looking into how <clears throat> GP, GBP is performing uh, overall in the UK as well and stuff like that. Um, but I see that now it's actually beginning to weaken again. So when we uh, are looking at um, higher time frame for data, does not mean that you can only trade on the long term, okay? But it is very, very important to look at the higher time frame to know what exactly uh, is going on with GBP, JPY in terms of trend as well. Let me just put this one here. So um, this one here, for example, as you can see, we have got a pin bar um, sort of clarity that it it is really tough for GBP, JPY to go up beyond this level. but 
uh, as I go onto the daily chart, then I can see more confirmation of this pin bar candle. If I go onto the lower time frame, I cannot see that, you see. So what if uh, most of the traders, they think that uh, there is time to buy and then they, they have uh, sort of overlooked this area right here which is only obvious on the daily chart and not really very obvious in the lower time frame you see so here as well if you see on a weekly chart itself you know there's a candle that have already sort of stick its wick right there meaning that that is where the resistance are um the resistance is really powerful at that area and here you can see you know even on the monthly chart itself you can see that it's really um, sort of like a cup and handle pattern, but then the movement is to the downside uh, and it's not really giving you any, any hints that, um, you know, it's going to be, if, if it were to actually being pushed by any price action or any um, uh, fundamental news catalyst, then we have got a limit at this area here. Okay, whatever it is, there's a limit here. So that is why we need to know that the GBP, JPY, we cannot get overexcited with any upward type movement, but we may be able to actually ride a long more downtrend because you see this whole area to the left right here is governed by bearish candles uh, by sellers, not, not buyers so much. It has gone up right there, but then look at, look at all the um, upward type movement in this whole movement is very weak on the upside, but stronger and longer on the downside. So whatever that uh, it is actually doing, as soon as it actually start falling and coming down with strong bearish candle, it would actually be mirroring all these other mother candles right here. So this is for GBP, JPY, okay? So uh, there's still a lot of opportunities for GBP, JPY as well, but not right now uh, at this moment of time. Uh, CAD, JPY, we need, it to reverse so we are looking at commodity currencies as a whole but i think it could actually be driven by crude oil so we are that's why i've mentioned earlier on that it is a bit on a slowdown in terms of interest in trading oil at this moment of time uh, also in the saudi side of it they are going into holiday mode okay the vacations and all that uh, will be starting uh, from now on in the month of august for the saudi side uh, the middle eastern countries as well okay so here we might find um there's still resistance on cad jpy so <coughs> i'm still strong on the downward movement that i expect but of course the 86 uh, 80 area is very powerful support right there which basically is um also very close to the centroid area but my uh aim on the cad jpy is on the downside much more than the upside because if you guys uh, remember we've talked about a bit of a z pattern there we've talked about um we've talked about all these uh pattern that are actually going on but then we are riding this uh abcd pattern right here as well and there's many abcds that are showing signs that it could actually be bringing the prices downward for uh, cad jpy as opposed to up upward type movement okay so that is cad jpy now um we need to also go through AUD USD. Now, AUD USD is one of those that has been um, triggered, but then, uh, you know, it has moved up quite a lot as well. But at this moment of time, it is still uh, building the resistance right there now at this area. Yes, it has actually gone up ab above as well uh, and things like that. But what I will do right now is to clear up AUD USD and let's uh, refresh the analysis, refresh everything because you guys are already trading it anyway. So we want to look at what can we actually expect uh, as of now, especially and medium term and long term. Now, if I were to look at it from this perspective, uh, we've got a bit of a support mainly because it has found support. On the weekly chart, you can see this, but on the others, not very clear. So on the weekly chart, what I can see is that <coughs> it's got a chance 
of support and supporting price maybe as a form of correction because of the weakness of the dollar at this moment of time but australian dollar is also very weak so actually if you look at australian dollars weakness is much more than the us dollars weakness at this moment of time but um it is actually trapped in within this uh three lines at this moment of time it found support exactly on the on the uh, on both lines the 50 and the 100 the 200 and the 100 ema right here now that can be seen on the weekly chart i go into the monthly chart you can actually see that somehow the price is blocked up here okay it is just so impossible for prices to actually go beyond this area also beyond this area so i'm going to um just help you guys out there to actually uh convince you guys that at this moment of time, Australia is really struggling. So the Australian dollar, even versus the USD, could actually ride along that downtrend and actually is getting stronger and stronger to the downside as opposed to the upside. Um, it's just going to be very difficult uh, for it to actually go above the 77.50 area as well. So this is where the border is. And then once it, if it does, go through this border which is a very strong resistance actually if you look at it to the left as well and this is on, on a monthly chart that we're looking at even if it goes up it's got a very limited type movement to the upside because it'll get blocked again at the very top here okay so this is uh, at the 08000 uh, area so we do have at the moment um if at all it's going to correct and things like that um if something is driving the Australian dollar up and up and up and it's very aggressive, um, it might actually have a little bit of limit. And that limit I can see at this level right here at 74.50. Uh, 74.50 area would actually be uh, a bit of a limit uh, there as well. So that is also a psychological level. So now we look at it as a big data. Then we go lower to the weekly chart. Okay, as we go to the uh, weekly chart, as you can actually see, we have prices now trading at 7380s area. So in other words, there is just no chance, no good opportunity to buy or sell. Why? Because it is actually at a very bad price, 7388, very close to 7380 area anyway. So if you are thinking of selling or we want to write the selling type pressure to the downside, um, it needs to happen at 7370 onwards anyway, right? So what we do is we just mark this 7370 area, okay? 7370 area, right? Okay, so this is where we can potentially sell from. But do we actually have um, on the left as well any power of mother candle? Yes, we do, but then it's much lower. Okay, much lower and this is much lower. So we move on to the daily chart right now. And we start looking to the left as well and see how much can we be encouraged with the downward type movement, especially in the shorter term. So we can go to the four hour chart and then we see that our selling price much better would actually be at 7.370. Now it's trading at 7.388, just too risky. You want to sell now? Yes, you can. But, you know, it's probably better for us to write a trend and write uh, along where there are buying, is buying or selling power. Now we're looking for selling power. So selling power under the 73.70 area. Yes, we have some. We have some right here as well. Um, but we need to also look at whether we have got some strong support at this area down here. Okay. And let's see. Okay. Go on a daily chart. On the daily chart, it's a little bit clearer as well that we have got some very strong support. Um, no matter what you do when you sell at 7370, as it goes downwards, um, you can see that we have got some limited support right here. And that is at 7359 area. Okay. But I will start to mark the uh, support area with the blue lines okay and that is one right there let's see okay 
and also as it goes downwards more we may have this area right here and another area that's based on the finishing um bearish candle but also we want to work on this area 7329 maybe a little bit above okay so once i've actually lay out all these based on a um, bigger time frame then i can go lower to see on the lower short term as well so now i have used the daily chart to actually um, lay out the support potential support for my cell at 7370 then i move to the four hour chart and i can see that it has been laid out very nicely now okay but these lines are made are actually created on the daily chart but when we go onto the four hour chart it became really clear as well where the support are based on the daily charts uh, support okay if that makes sense so your selling is 7370 so your pending order AUD USD is still to the downside selling at 7370 as your pending sell order right uh, so when we look to the left if we are thinking of selling there yes you've got you've got this bearish candle right here that it could potentially um follow or mirror right there because this is the most obvious one right here uh, that is one single candle uh, downwards right so if i were to uh, mark a cell zone i can actually base on yeah from here okay right to here okay so that basically gives us a little bit of a potential uh, telling us that yes if you want to sell you sell at 7370 but uh, you've only got about 10 pips to make and exit at 7360 because this is where we have a 7350 uh, psychological number with a lot of strong support right there. So this means that, yes, it could actually come down and reverse uh, as well because the potential for it to come down too is not yet strong, okay? So not just yet for for Australian dollar versus the USD to, to fall too much at this moment, also because the market's closed at that side of the world, and then we don't have too much strength of the USD at this moment of time as well, not yet, you see. So it is on the weaker side as well. So that's why it is experiencing this kind of movement at this moment of time uh, for Australian dollar versus the US dollar. So this is uh, what we can actually do is uh, to have that pending order sell, but then you've got a very uh, small window for the sell. So that basically also means that um, we may not expect too much big movements to the downside. We may actually expect the fall of the uh, Australian dollar versus the US dollar. But until this area at 7350, if it goes lower, yes, uh, it might actually end up at the 7330 area or 7340 area and then, and then reverse again to the upside because we have got the support. Uh, let me see. Let me just... This support area right here is quite strong. Um, and also this area right here. Okay, that's all in the 7320s area uh, as well. So there you go. We have got 7350 area as the support, strong support area, also at the 7320 area. So we've got a bit of a limit for the fall of the Australian dollar, maybe a little bit slow. It might fall, but then slow and then reverse again and then come down again. Uh, so not really a very, very big fall expected yet, but uh, overall the trend is on the downside. Okay, guys, you guys have got any questions on your trades on anything that you want to take a look at this moment of time? Euro and ZD is doing quite well to the downside, but uh, we want to look at support areas as well. Uh, there is quite a powerful support area at um, this area right here from the opening price of this mother candle, bullish mother candle at 1.6735 area. So watch out for that. And the uh, interesting thing about it is that on the weekly chart, that bearish candle itself has already planted the week as a support exactly at that blue line that is based on the opening price of the previous 
long time ago bullish candle as you can actually see so it is limiting its move to the downside as well for euro and zd usd czar yes of course we can take a look at uh, usd czar let's take a look at that usd jpy let's see we need this we don't need this now um, let's see usd czar Hmm. Is it around here? Yes. Okay. So let's take a look at the czar. Um, use the versus the czar. Let's clear out some of the previous um, objects and drawings that I've done. Okay. Let's take a look at USD ZAR. Now, I am looking at it from the uh, four hour perspective. Now, straight away, what jumps out uh, technically is a very, very long week right here. Okay. So it's already giving you hints uh, about the USD, uh, you know, moving upwards, uh, you know, beyond this area, quite impossible. Okay. That's why it's making that correction to come down as well. Uh, at this moment of time, it may be riding along um, a bearish type zone at this moment of time, following this mother candle right here. Okay. There you go. It is trading at 14.48 area. So it needs to go down. Um, we treat this like the Japanese uh, yen as well. Uh, so 14, we look at 14.48. So 14.48, um, maybe 14.482, I think. Uh, this is how we read it, if I, can, if I could remember correctly. I think, yes. So we're looking at it uh, at the 78 to 80 type psychological level. Let us just confirm this. Let's see where this one actually reverse 6089. Yes. Um, so we just, uh, we just look at it at four decimal places after the decimal point. So we look at it at, let's say for this example, 14.60897. We take the last digit out. Uh, we just look at 6089. So 89 itself uh, would be the psychological number. Let's see this one here. 84.42, yes, correct. Uh, and this one here, 88, yep. Brilliant. So um, how we look at it is um, for the USD czar in terms of psychological numbers, let's say the current price right now is at 14.4809, right? Uh, 48092. We'll get rid of the uh, last digit, the very last digit. So we'll we'll just look at it at four decimal places after the decimal point. So it will be at 4801. Okay. So 144801 right here. So what we do then is look at the last two digits here. Okay. Based on 14. 0.4801 that's 01 basically so it needs to it is very close to the 14.4800 psychological number based on the last two digits right here okay so um we are looking at it to go down lower then it's got more potential to the cell so it needs to be at 4790 right so 4790 onwards it would probably be better for the cell to actually occur um, so let's uh, analyze it a little bit better. Let's look at this. Um, on the daily chart as well, you know, very, very clear um, sort of downtrend. But I also see, I mean, when if we go on to the four-hour chart, um, it's not very clear on any pattern. You see, uh, maybe a little bit here, head here, shoulder, a potential shoulder here as well with just a wick as well. But then if we go into the daily, then it may actually be a little bit clearer on this area as well. Still shoulder, head here, shoulder, shoulder. Um, but I'm not sure myself uh, whether or not this whole week can actually be a shoulder, uh, you know. So this is uh, where I am not 100% sure 
on on that but then looking at how it has already uh, sort of set its territory to actually sell mainly because of this very powerful wick that is almost touching the 200 EMA it's a very powerful move to consider downside move as opposed to up uh, upside so there is a lot of um, downward type movement that is expected I think uh, you see all these uh, high uh, lower highs and then lower lows as well so this is basically motivating most traders to consider downtrend uh, movement and as well as for myself it is definitely looking stronger to the downside um, only uh, issue is that uh, if you're looking at time frame as well to the left, uh, higher time frame to the left, uh, following the current price, it is not showing us a lot of um, uh, candles that are very strong to the downside. We have a little bit, but they are very short uh, mother candles. So that tells me that yes, it might fall a bit, but not too wild on the downside as well, because we have some support. We have some strong support that is going on. I mean, on the weekly chart itself, uh, we have got one single candle support opening price of a mother candle that could actually potentially be a very strong support as well because we've got support here, support and all that. And that is at 14.4110, okay? So that basically means that you need to watch out for the 14.41 um oh let me see i think we have made the price psychological price there a little bit not that accurate uh, let's see that's um it on some pips cannot be let's see if we are measuring the pips here correctly uh -huh. That should be one, two, 1,155, 1,155 pips down. So we need to get rid of two digits, uh, last two digits there to look at the number of pips, right? Okay, so let's say from here to here, two digits off, 468 pips. Yeah, that sounds about right. So um, I need to probably reevaluate the uh, psychological numbers just to make it more accurate as well. Um, but in terms of um, price action and various other things that is going on, um, you need to watch out for a very strong support at uh, 14.4110. Okay, so basically it is at the 18 down so we need to look at 817 and the difference at 101 48 41 even the 48 and 41 actually it looks like we can evaluate the price action like the uh, japanese yen actually it's uh, not making much sense of this but this is on the weekly chart Okay, let me get to that, but um, be sure that the 14.4110 area is the area that we need to watch out for the very well strong support. The bias for USD versus the czar is uh, definitely to the downside. Okay. And if we go on to a very, uh, let's say, shorter time frame, one hour chart, let's say, it's definitely shown very clearly in this area that is really strongly bearish an area right here, giving you that whole fall. There is a potential for the fall, but I think under this area, under the 1445 uh, area, uh, 4550 area, it will probably be bringing down the price a lot more. And then you can see it uh, basically support area here at 1437, 14.3783 area. Okay. So yeah, it's got a bit of a support right there as well. So um, yes, it is on the downside, respecting all these candles, even for the shortest term, but it's got loads of room uh, going down and down and down in stages, okay? Because uh, it has marked its territory at the very top. Okay, any other questions, guys? You guys okay so far? Are you clear with that? USD ZAR, yeah, it's okay.
Any other questions? English only teacher. They understand it. Okay, lah. Because they say they add in some IDCSE questions or disturb. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions, guys? All good so far. Okay, let's take a look at gold as well. Gold. Okay, so gold, I'm uh, maintaining this uh, ABCD pattern as you can see, but it's, you know, far off uh, from where uh, we are targeting it, of course. Uh, but then we're still expecting upward type movement. At this stage, it is still at the low end of prices as well. Okay, so um, it is trading at the 17, uh, 1799 or eighteen hundreds area. Now for gold, we have got some technical prices we need to take a look at. So one of it, uh, it's the very... Uh, strong resistant area at 1830, 1830 is a very strong uh, resistant area. So no matter what it actually is doing, it will uh, sort of um, uh, play around in that area of 1830. Now, this is very interesting because as I have drawn this ABCD, the centroid coincidentally was at 1836, which is really, really close to 1830. Now, 1830 is a global type resistance level that a lot of experts, a bank's expert, and uh, when you look at all these reports about gold in various parts of the world, they always talk about this 1830 level. Now, the 1830 level as well, strong support, could also become um, strong resistance, could also become support. So that is an area that, uh, as you can see, it has found a lot of resistance there as well, has gone there, come back down, come down, find it as support, go up, and various other things have actually happened at that area. So um, to actually expect good big moves to the upside, it has to go above 1830 and above. As soon as it goes 18 above, 1830 and above, and then start going upwards, then we can see this whole pattern um, materializing much more. But of course, we have got the C, uh, B point right here as a very uh, powerful resistance level as well. So we do have some movement to the upside uh, expected, but it has to first go up and reach the 1830 area. But um, at this moment of time as well, we are a little bit uh, weary of the double top area right here because this double top has to happen first <coughs> and i think um we're expecting more fall of the uh, price of gold and as it goes downwards it would most probably ride along this bearish candle here and this bearish candle right here finding support at the c point and then go back up again so what i see as a potential is this double top building up meaning a double bottom uh, basically so what that means is that we've got a double top right here most probably push the price downwards and if it does go down to this area right here in parallel with this area it'll create a double bottom as well to push the price upwards okay so as long as it maintains this area right here as a support which is a c point area um, and not go lower than that, then this pattern should actually still be intact. Okay, so at this moment of time, uh, if we go on to lower time frame as well, I think the bias is still to the downside. It's just respecting, like for the one hour chart, it's just respecting some support area right here. It needs to go lower, um, lower than this area, this area here, which is roughly at 170 like 1800 has to go lower than 1800 or uh, 17 sorry 1798 or 1790 and below especially here 1798.68 area this yellow line as soon as it comes down lower and goes lower then we can see more uh, movement expected to the downside because we have got quite a number of this 
uh, bearish candle going on as well. So um, at this moment of time, it's still at the limbo. Um, it's still probably waiting for more news uh, factor as well as events. Um, but then 1798 and below. So let's say 1790. As it reaches downwards and go lower to 1790, from 1790 onwards, you can actually then sell uh, because it will find support at some point and then go up again. So uh, we also have this triple top area here as well as a limit to the upside. Uh, it needs to break that limit, that area as well. And that is priced at 18, uh, as we've talked about earlier, 18, 1830s area. Yeah. Okay, so this is where we want to watch out for the 1830 area. As it goes closer to it, will it find resistance and come back down? Or will it make that re existing resistance as a support to go up much more? So it needs to be uh, that, that kind of uh, price action evaluation for gold. Also, the other price is that once it reaches that 1790, goes down reaches 1790 then you start selling at 1790 it can potentially go lower at a very global price uh, that a lot of experts are talking about as a support at 1680 okay 1680 that is very very low actually it's really low lower than the um the uh, c point so it has to be some catalyst out there, very, very big event to really crush the price of gold. But I don't think that could actually happen yet, but that is the worst case scenario, okay? Just to, to keep you guys away. But we don't need to look at that, uh, that level uh, yet. We just need to look at the 1790. The 1830 as your deciding factor, what whether to buy or to sell, okay? Where it reaches. And then as it goes lower, uh, under 1830 uh, and uh, under eight under 1798 and much lower it could um, you know it could pro probably go lower but then we will look at uh, the support to the left to actually take it in stages because we don't want to to sell too much as well we want to sell little by little so that you can govern your stop loss as well properly for gold because the overall picture is on the upside but it needs to uh, give us more confidence by the way it is actually moving as well with the prices. Okay, all good? All right, is that clear for gold? You guys are okay so far? All right, all good. Okay, all right. There you go. Um, if no questions, we will end the session. Any questions? Okay. All right. All good. US 30. Yes, we can. Let's take a look at US 30. Right. I have not erased this, um, this uh, diagram or drawing right here, uh, but it has been respecting all these lines quite well <coughs> that I have drawn. Uh, it's based on some parts of gun uh, technique in drawing all these geometric shapes. Uh, but at the moment, it looks like it is uh, in within a bearish zone, uh, in within a bullish zone, sorry. And let's see. Because we don't have much point of reference, you see. Um, when we look at the price to the left and stuff like that. Okay, so here um, it looks like the only point of reference that I have is that it is going above these lines and it has uh, a limit at the 36,661. So the possible resistance zone would actually be at that level at 36,660 area. Okay, so that would probably be an area of resistance, but it's looking quite um, quite strong to the upside, mainly from the way it's actually moving the angle as well. It's just looking like uh, there are more potential to the upside. Yeah, so it has found a lot of support uh, there based on that, but it needs to it needs to uh, burst out of this whole flat area right here. Okay, it needs to burst out 
from the flat area of 335,140 uh, area. Um, then you can actually look at more uh, support at this moment of time, a little bit too early uh, to actually just enter on a buy. Just um, probably look into a buying price of uh, 35,145 or something like that, one, uh, 35,143 or 35,142, that kind of price first above the this uh, blue line, basically. Then it would probably be a little bit better because it's just not really that um, convincing at this moment of time if we are going to buy right now. It's creating the um, low highs as well, as you can see, and it is respecting the movements of some very big candles, you see. So this might want to actually drop a lot more to this area following this candle. So um, this single candle is where it might actually be uh, quite powerful for us to look at so there is a trading area um, a selling kind of trading area in this black box that i'm drawing at this moment uh, ranging from the price now until the price at 34,436. So um, this is probably the shorter term between one hour four hour or something like that uh, that is actually um, you know, uh, to the downside, it's looking like it's got more room to the downside. But after it has gone lower than 34,998 area, I think it would actually be going, going down a lot more. Okay. So it is in a selling type zone within, within a selling zone as well. I think um, it is on this candle at this moment but in within all this movement in the black box you want to look at uh, strong support areas as well like this one here okay and that is at 34,494 so let's say you are thinking of selling selling right now you can uh, but just be careful with certain support area but it has uh, a higher potential to come down and reach this area of support right here in within the black box basically so at this moment it's selling a tight environment for the us 30 at this moment okay right is it clear technically at least okay so let's take a look at uh alfred's ma um managed to find something about gbp usd and gbp jpy um, yes, I think we did, but briefly, GBP, JPY mainly, not so much GBP, USD. Um, okay, no problem. That's fine, uh, Alfred. I will uh, message you directly. Yeah. I'll send you the recorded version, Alfred. No, don't worry about it. Yeah. So let's uh, also for Alfred, Alfred go through the GBP, USD. GBP, JPY we have. Um, Okay, GBP USD. We'll take a look now, and then we'll send you the recorded version. Don't worry. Um, so overall, as we've mentioned about GBP as a whole, um, it is also weak and getting weaker. I mean, I mean not very clear uh, with what goes on in GBP because we've talked about how um, travel has not really picked up. A lot of people um, refuse to travel as well. So forty percent of the market in the UK don't want to travel. Also, they don't want to spend money too much at the moment as well, savings and all that more than um, buying things and spending. So the uh, buying behavior is not really stimulating the economy at this moment of time. So they still have fear factor in the GBP um, and the UK's economy. So looking at this, we've got a little bit of a dilemma, meaning that we are on a pair that has both economy a little bit fragile. Okay, USD in the US, a lot of things going on um, and pulling it to the downside and GBP as well in the UK. So with that, if we look at it technically for GBP USD itself, it is trading at 3925. So it is very close to a support area uh, based on psychological numbers at 3920. So if at all we are looking at uh, a chance to sell or more selling bias for the GBP, it needs to go under 39.20. So 39.10, 1.3910 would be a selling price. Um, do we actually have selling pressures? 
and also bearish candle yes we do uh, this is for the for the uh, four hour chart so we do have some selling areas right here but it's at 30 38 3800 area 38 now we're looking at four hour chart so we're looking at 3925 where it's trading so if you are selling at 3910 make sure you want to exit at the 3890s area or 3895 at least because we do have some support area right there um let's see one second let's bring this down just a little bit okay 38.98, okay. So yes, we do have some selling pressure for GBP USD, but make sure you exit at 38.98 area at least um, because the next sort of support would most probably be at this area right here or um, a little bit higher. Yeah, there at 3880s area so i think uh, whatever we do if we are selling right now you can sell right now or sell at 3910 so 1.3910 you sell your gbp but make sure you exit at 1.3890 okay 1.3890 so not really much the gap at the moment between current price um give me a second if you were to sell at 39.10, roughly, and exit at 39, um, 38.90, let's say, that would give you about 20 pips or so potential. That's for GBP USD. Okay, hope that's clear. So that's basically for the GBP USD at this moment of time. Because we also see support um, circulating or circling the area where the whole three EMAs are as well. So uh, 3880 may be a very strong support area. Whatever you do, um, selling your GBP USD, whether now or later, whether now at 3924 or 3910 under the psychological number, make sure you exit at 3890. That's it. Okay, just so that um, your um, your risks are sort of covered. Okay. AUD USD. I think we have um, we have just um, gone over it as well. Yeah, AUD USD. We've we've gone over it, so you can watch it in the um, in the video. Okay, I have circled that area. So your selling area is 7370 onwards. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 7370, and I think you can take about 20 pips or 30 pips and exit at 7330, roughly. Okay. All right, so that's AUD USD. All right, guys, if you guys have got no questions, um, then I'll end the session. I've got another webinar to uh, get into at, uh, in 15 minutes time. Okay, so no questions, or if you guys have got questions, just direct um, message me directly after watching the video as well. If there's anything that's not clear, uh, just, just ask me, okay? All right, guys, take care. Have a very good weekend, okay? Um, take it easy as well as uh, be safe. And uh, we will we will uh, chat again and meet you guys on Monday uh, on the Monday's uh, webinar. Okay, take care, guys. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Have a good weekend. Bye bye. Bye.